You ready? Sit down. Hey, my friends, it's time for circle. Hey, my friends, come and have a seat. Hey, my friends, it's time for circle. Please put your things away and put your eyes on me. If you can hear me, touch your ears. If you can hear me, pat your head. If you can hear me, pat your legs and stop. Awesome. Hey, you guys. I'm so excited to be making a video and to be able to see you guys here today. Have you guys been having fun? I really have missed you all so much. Do you guys notice something different about me? Is it that my hair is shorter? Nope. Is it that I got new glasses? Nope. Is it that I'm wearing something purple on my face? It is. What is this purple thing on my face? Do you know? A mask. It's a mask. That's right. Have you been seeing people wear masks? Yeah, maybe your mom or your dad, your grandparents or other people who come to take care of you. Maybe you've seen them at the grocery store or people walking around outside. Today we are going to be talking about masks and all sorts of different kinds of them and why we should be wearing them. One of the things I wanted to talk about first is that when you wear a mask, people can't see your mouth, right? Can you see my mouth? You can see that my mouth is moving. You can see the movement, but you can't see what my mouth is saying. It's very important when you're wearing a mask to use loud voice and talk very clearly so that people can understand you. I might say, Hola or konnichiwa, or hi, or namaste, or hello, you have to make sure that people can hear you loud and clear because they won't be able to see from your mouth what you're saying. Before we get into the different kinds of masks and why we wear them, I wanted to sing a song with you guys that I know that you love very much. Do you guys want to sing a song with me? Yeah? Okay, before we do, I'm going to change masks. See how this goes right behind my ear? And it's very stretchy, not tight. So it doesn't hurt at all. Oh, that was caught on my glasses. I'm going to put this one on. It's a different color. See, stretch. It's going to go around my ear, just like that over my face and around whoops and around my ear just like that if you need help putting one on you can ask an adult to help you see easy peasy and what is on my mask today friends it's a dinosaur! It is, it's a dinosaur. And so for my dinosaur mask, I thought you guys might want to do the dinosaur. The dinosaur song. You ready? Stand up. We're gonna march. We are the dinosaurs marching, marching. We are the dinosaurs. What do you think of that? Huh. We are the dinosaurs marching, marching. Are the dinosaurs we the earth flat? We make the earth flat. Reach! When we're in the moon. Reach! Reach! When we're in the moon, we step in eat our food and then we march around. Ready? We are the dinosaurs marching, marching. We are the 
dinosaurs. What do you think of that? Oh, we are the dinosaurs. Marching, marching. We are the dinosaurs. We make the earth flat. We make the earth flat. Stop and take a rest over in our nest. We stop and take a rest at the end of the day. Stop and take a rest over in our nest. We stop and take a rest when you'll hear us say. Are the dinosaurs marching, marching? We are the dinosaurs. What do you think of that? Huh? We are the dinosaurs marching, marching. We are the dinosaurs. We make the earth flat. We make the earth flat, and then we roar. Because we are the dinosaurs. Awesome! That was so much fun, you guys. I had a lot of fun singing that song with you guys. I miss when we were able to sing that song in our classroom, but I love that we were able to see the dinosaur on my mask and also do the dinosaur song. When I'm wearing this mask, what do I look like to you? That's a funny question. Let me ask you again. When I wear this mask, what do I look like to you? Maybe when I wear this mask. What do I look like to you? I've seen people wear this mask at the doctor's office. Yeah, I've seen Doctors wear these masks and nurses wear these masks, either at the doctor's office or at the hospital. Yeah, have you seen them too? And recently, that means within the last few weeks, I've seen more people wearing masks outside, walking around, and also at the stores, at the grocery store. Have you seen it too? Yeah. Yeah. And there's no reason to be worried about somebody wearing a mask. They just look different because they have something extra on their face. Yeah, just like your mom or dad looks a little bit different with something extra on their face. And Miss Potter looks a little bit different with something extra on her face. It doesn't feel bad at all. It feels a little bit different because it's something new and something extra on my face. Now that we've seen all of the different types of masks, there are also different types of gloves that people can put on. When we are washing our hands, we're keeping all the germs off our hands. We're washing all of them away with the soapy water all the way down the sink. And if you are not close to a sink, what is something that you could use to get all the germs off your hands? Hand sanitizer. You could use hand sanitizer. That's right. One little pump of hand sanitizer and you rub it all over your hands just like you were washing them. When I go to the grocery store, I use gloves and I put them on my hands. It reminds me not to touch my hands to my face since I know going to the grocery store, I'll be touching the cart and the groceries and the money to pay, and I'll be touching the shelf that the groceries are on. So there's so many different things that I know I'm going to be touching. And so instead of going with my hands, I'm going to wear gloves to keep myself safe. Now, what if I had allergies and I had a stuffy nose and I had to do a big sneeze. And I, uh, 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 but, oh, 
If I do a really big sneeze, what is gonna come out of my nose and mouth? Germs for sure. Germs are gonna come out of my nose and mouth. And because I just sneezed and I went, all of my germs would go flying into the air. <gasps> Do you know what kept my germs from flying into the air? This mask. This mask was able to keep all of my germs inside with me. That way, I don't get anybody else sick. I might not be sick, but I still want to protect everyone else from my germs. When you go back to school, you might have to have a mask on to protect yourself from other people's germs and protect them from your germs too. Your teachers might wear a mask, just like the people at the grocery store and your mom and dad too might be trying to wear a mask. It's important to know that when we all take off the masks, we're just the same people. The same people that we all love and that we smile with. It's hard to tell if somebody's smiling when they're wearing their mask. You can look at somebody's eyes to see if they're smiling. Let's watch. Right now, I'm smiling. And you can tell in my eyes that I'm smiling. When I'm not smiling, do I look happy? No. Do I look happy? No. Do I look happy now? Yeah. You can tell in somebody's voice and in the way that they look how they're feeling. We're going to talk about that in another video. Before we go, I wanted to read to you one of my favorite books growing up. I actually bought this book. It was one of the first books that I ever bought. It's called Weedle on the Needle. Have you ever read this book? Well, let's find out about this Weedle on the Needle. Many, many years ago, before explorers sailed the Northwest, there lived a large and happy creature called the Weedle. He was pleasantly plump, covered in orange, fluffy fur. He had a big, round, red nose. He spent his days sniffing flowers and enjoying the peace and quiet that nature offered. He looks happy sniffing that flower. Forever and a day, everything was peaceful. Until one afternoon, uh-oh. How is he looking, friends? Does he still look happy? Does he look peaceful? No. How do you think he's feeling? Hmm. Frustrated? Maybe angry? Let's see. Until one afternoon, the Weedle watched curiously as a large ship sailed into the bay. Laughing loudly, workers jumped from the ship and set about clearing the land and building this and that and other things. As they worked, they whistled. And the more they worked, the more they whistled. All that whistling was hurting the poor Weedle's ears. The whistling continued night and day and the Weedle could get absolutely no sleep at all. With no sleep, he became grouchier and grouchier. If he was ever going to get some sleep, the Weedle knew that he must put a stop to all this whistling. Hmm, he thought, if the workers don't have their tools, then they won't be able to work, and if they can't work, they won't whistle. So later that night, he sneaked into the workers' camp and took all of their tools. Sadly for the Weedle, the next morning, 
the men quickly got new tools from the ship and went back to work, whistling even louder than before. He took all of their tools. Was that kind or unkind? Unkind. Those were not his tools, so he should not be touching them. Did it help him to take all of their tools? No, they found new tools and they worked anyway. So he was unkind and unhelpful. If anything, the Weedle was resourceful. He decided that the next best thing to do was scare the workers. For when workers are scared, they can't pucker. And when they can't pucker, they can't whistle. As we all know, a puckerless whistle is no whistle at all. One by one, he began creeping up behind them and growling at the top of his voice. Sure enough, the workers were so scared that they couldn't whistle a wit. All would have been Weedle's salvation, save for one brave lumberjack, who, to prove he wasn't scared, simply whistled. The Weedle put his hands over his ears and he ran into the forest. Well, let me tell you, that did it. The Weedle knew he could no longer live near the bay, so he packed up his things and he left. He left? But he loves the nature. Where do you think he's going to go? Oh, no. He wandered high into the mountains, searching for a place far enough away from the workers that he wouldn't hear the whistling. He wandered and wandered until he came to the wary top of Mount Rainier. He listened very carefully. What a delight. He couldn't even hear the whisper of a whistle on the wind. He quickly unpacked his sleeping bag, his toothbrush with a squiggly on the end, and his white woolly pajamas. This was the quiet place that he had hoped for, this was a place where he could sleep for a long, long time. He quickly brushed his teeth, washed his furry hands, and slipped into his woolly pajamas. Then he slid his big body into the sleeping sack flopped his head on his pillow, and fell fast asleep. He was so happy in his deep sleep that his big red nose blinked on and off like a flashing light on a tall pole. He slept through the night, through the day, through weeks and months, and through several years. Oh, such sweet, sweet dreams. But after a long while, something woke the Weedle from his deep sleep. So he slept years. Not just one night, he slept for years. That's a long time. Whistling, loud whistling, happy whistling. He looked about and much to his surprise, he saw that the workers had continued to build over the years and now they had built almost to the edge of his mountain. But what was almost more alarming was that now everybody was whistling, children and workers alike. Oh no, cried the Weedle. What am I ever going to do with all this whistling? I'll never get back to sleep. He began pacing up and down the mountain, mumbling and grumbling all the while. Then his nose lit up and a smile crossed his lips. I've got it, he chuckled. And with that, he removed everything from his large striped bag. And with it dragging behind, he climbed to the very top of Mount Rainier. He stood on his fuzzy tiptoes, reached up into the sky, and grabbed a cloud. Then he grabbed another and another. One by one, he stuffed the clouds into the bag until he had it full 
to overflowing. What is inside that bag, friends? Clouds. He's putting clouds inside that bag. What do you think he's going to do with the clouds? I wonder if he's going to make a pillow out of it. Mm, or maybe a better bed. Let's find out. With the bag thrown over his shoulder, he set out for the source of his noisily whistling problem, the growing city of Seattle. The skyline of the city was filled with tall buildings, but the Weedle only needed one to complete his plan, and he was going to the Space Needle. Do you see the Space Needle? What is he going to do? with all of those clouds and the space needle. <gasps> Giddy to put his plan into action, he hurried to the space needle, jumped onto an elevator and zipped to the very top. There he stood and looked about all around where happy children and workers all whistling and laughing and having a good time. The Weedle chuckled as he reached deep into the soggy bag. He grabbed a fluffy cloud by the tail and slung it around and around. He flipped it into the air. The cloud lifted high into the sky and then hung there like a glop of whipped cream on a blue kitchen ceiling. The cloud gurgled and sloshed, and then one drop of rain fell, and then another, and then another, and soon it was pouring rain. Now the kindly folks in Seattle like the rain, but it is nearly impossible and highly improbable that one can whistle while any intensity of a rainstorm. With the rain falling all around, everyone ran inside, and soon it became very still, very quiet indeed. The Weedle stretched out on the top of the Space Needle, and using the bag of clouds as a pillow, fell fast asleep. With each snarkled snore, his big red nose slowly blinked on and off. And as he slept, it rained and it rained and it rained. So the Weedle brought all of those clouds to the Space Needle so that it would start to rain and the people would go inside. Because if the people went inside, they weren't whistling. And it rained. The people of Seattle had to stay inside, and they became very sad. It didn't take much to figure out that someone was throwing clouds into the sky from the top of the Space Needle. Finally, the mayor himself went to the Weedle on the Space Needle to plead with him to stop throwing rain clouds into the sky. Please, said the mayor, will you stop throwing clouds into the sky? The kindly folk of Seattle love to whistle while they work, but with all the rain, there is little to whistle about, and without whistling, there is little work being done. The Weedle said he was sorry, but still, all he couldn't sleep with, with uh, when all he heard was whistling. There was nothing that he could do. Now the mayor thought and thought quickly, and he devised a plan, a wonderful plan indeed. The mayor's plan was a simple plan, and sometimes simplicity is best. And through the night and into the next morning, sailmakers stitched and sewed cotton, flannel, and wool. Miles of thread were laced through the eyes of needles, and the weathered hands of the sailmakers sewed. They sewed pink flannel into yellow wool and blue cotton and red flannel, and by early morning they had finished their task. Whoever said that mayors never think a thoughtful thought? This was a good plan. This plan was great. They're taking all of that fluff and making it into something. At precisely noon, not a minute before, not a minute after, the mayor again met with the Weedle on the Needle. In his hands, he held the largest pair of earmuffs you have ever seen. 
These earmuffs are for you, said the mayor in his most political of voices. With these on your ears, you won't hear a thing. You won't hear us whistle. You won't even hear the big whistles from the ships in the harbor or the trains going by. The Weedle pulled the earmuffs over his ears and was surrounded in the delight of silence. He didn't hear the kindly folk of Seattle cheering. He didn't hear the end of the mayor's speech. With the earmuffs in place, he simply rolled over and fell fast asleep. So content was he that his big red nose again began to blink. There's a weedle on the needle. I know what you're thinking. But if you look up late at night, you'll see his red nose blinking. Okay, that's one of my favorite books. The Weedle on the Needle, written by Stephen Cosgrove. Okay, friends, I want to do our goodbye song. Ready? Good morning, good morning, how are you, how are you, very well I thank you, very well I thank you, how about you, how about you, ready, we're gonna do it, one more time. Good morning, good morning, how are you, how are you, very well I thank you, very well I thank you, how about you, how about you. Bye friends, I'll see you soon, stay healthy, wash your hands, wear a mask.